Hello everyone, my name is Hadil and today we're going to talk about masking shapes in generative art. So this is basically what we are going to recreate and essentially this is a background layer with lots of offset rectangles or random rectangles around the screen with random corners and some 3D noise. And then the top layer has the mask, which is a bunch of random circles uh, layered on top of each other to create this look at the end. To start, we'll be creating 2P graphics, one for the background layer, so whatever your design is, and another for our mask layer. So in order to understand how masking actually works, I'm going to start by doing a very simple mask with maybe a random walk or just a line going across the screen just to see how things are actually getting masked. And for that, we're going to need uh, 2P graphics. One is going to be our background layer. Actually, I'm just gonna call it BG just to make it much easier for us to write it later because we're going to use that a lot. And then for this, it's going to be mask. You can also call it just M. Okay, so I'm going to create a point and I want that point to move across the screen. So I'm just gonna do float X and Y for positions. Actually, we don't need Y, we're just gonna need X because we're gonna move horizontally. And then X is going to start at zero and I'm going to draw a circle at x and height divided by 2 because I want it just in the center. I'm going to just make it 25 by 25. Oh, for circle you only need one variable for the size. And then if I run this, we're just going to get... Oh, we have to increase x over here, so x++. plus plus. And if I run this, I'm just going to get a circle that draws on the screen horizontally. And now we want to mask this circle. So let's draw a rectangle or a circle in the center and let it mask whatever is in the background. So before we can, before we can do that, we're going to have to draw this circle inside of our background. And to do that, let's actually create the 2P graphics. So um, I'm just going to do background equals create graphics because that's how we create a graphics and I'm going to just make it uh, the width and height of the screen. Usually that's how it goes. Uh, if you want to save high quality images or bigger sized images then you would just create P graphics with the size that you desire and draw everything inside of it. And then your screen is still going to be, so whatever you're going to see over here is going to be 500 by 500, is going to be 500 by 500, but then um, it's going to draw or save whatever this size is, just so you know. And then I'm going to also create the mask for now because it's going to be the same. And the way you can put this circle inside of that graphics layer is by saying background and begin draw. So begin draw is going to start drawing inside of that layer. And then you're gonna have to use the variable with everything that you wanna draw. So even if you want to change the stroke for this layer, you're gonna have to say background.stroke or in this uh, instance, I want no stroke. And then I'm going to do a fill of black, so zero. And finally, once you're done with that layer, you're gonna just do background dot and draw. Also, it's good to know that you can do begin draw and end draw for the same layer um, in different places. So let's say you want to draw this and then you wanna do something else over here and then you wanna draw something into that layer again. So you would just say, begin draw and then end draw and then it'll add it to that to this background layer to this graphics layer and you'll see why i mentioned this because we're going to use it that way later okay let's see if i run it you're not going to see anything the reason for this is because we're just drawing the layer into this p graphics but we're not showing it and the way you can show it is by using 
the image function. And you can just call that. And I'll start drawing it from 0, 0, since it has the same width and height as the screen. And you can see that we're back. But now, I mean, it's different color just because I did no stroke and a fill of 0. Uh, if we remove both of these, then you're going to see the default colors, which is a stroke of black and a fill of white. And now to the fun part, masking. So we already created the graphics for the mask, but now we want to create whatever shape is going to be inside of that layer to be used as the mask. And I'm going to, as I said, draw a circle. So it's just going to be circle and I'm going to put it at width divided by two and height divided by two, so in the center. And then I'm going to make it 100 pixels, 200 maybe, just because I don't want to wait for that circle to move until it, we can see it. And then here, mask dot and draw. And now before we draw the background image, we want to mask it with this mask layer. So the way you can do this is just do background, the layer that you want to mask, and then you just use the mask function and use whatever mask you created. So conveniently, we called it mask over here, and this should work. The only problem here is that by default, the P graphics element or the P graphics class has a background of black, and this is where the other trick that I showed you come in handy. So uh, what, what I'm gonna do here is change the background actually for this background layer because this is a mask, it doesn't really have any colors or it doesn't see anything. Um, so I'm going to do begin draw over here and then background and I'm gonna make it white and then end draw. And now we're not seeing anything, but as you can see, this is being masked by something and we're not seeing exactly what uh, is masking it just because the background is white and this part is also white, which is the original graphics or the original screen. So let's change this to, I don't know, anything grayish maybe. Let's make it 50 just so we can see it. And now you can see the circle, and as this starts moving, you can see it actually happening behind this layer, which is the mask or our circle. And if I change this into a square, let's say, and because squares are drawn from uh, the corner, we're gonna have to change its mode. So we're just gonna make it center, and it should work now, yeah. Next is creating the fun designs, which is, I think it much more interesting than this. Okay, let's remove masking over here. Actually, let's remove everything and start all over since we already know how things are working. Uh, but I'm just going to leave all of these since we're not using them over here. It doesn't matter that much. So the first thing that you see in the design, if I go back to it, the first thing you notice, I bet, in this design are the colorful rectangles. So let's create that first and then we'll deal with the noise or the 3D noise part. The reason why I didn't want to just use a normal rectangle is because it's more fun to use or to create your own rectangle with vertices in order to offset them or play around with them and I don't know, I like them when they're a little bit cartoony or a little bit odd because that's usually what differentiates computer art from hand-drawn art and I like to mix the two a little bit. And we always, or I always draw crooked rectangles and I like the look of them sometimes that I don't want perfect rectangles. So I'm just gonna create a function and I'm gonna just call it odd rectangle or odd rect, uh, similar to the rect function. And then I want them to have um, just the normal variables, which is the x and y position, and then uh, width and height. And then finally, I want them to have an offset, which is going to be the offset for each corner. And since I want them to be drawn inside of this background layer, because it's also going to be masked, 
then I'm going to also add P graphics or a variable that is a P graphic. And I'm just going to call it G and we're going to use it over here. So I'm just going to say begin draw and end draw before I start drawing inside of it. So now we're ready to draw whatever we want inside of it. And drawing a rectangle with vertices is very simple because it's just four straight corners and then we can add the offset into them. The way you would go about this is from left to right and then down and then to the left and then you're going to close it. So we don't even need to go upward because if you, uh, actually we're going to also need begin shape and then end shape. And we won't need the begin draw and end draw because we're going to use it later on or outside of it. So the first point, just imagine it being on the zero, zero point. So if I do X and Y, um, imagining wherever I position that X and Y for the corner of the rectangle. So if you see this as the corner, this is a rectangle, the screen, the window, and then this is the corner or, or this part. Um, is the top left corner with where the square or the rectangle is going to be drawn from. So that's the first point. And then the second point is going to go to the right. So we're staying horizontally at the same position at the same Y position, but then we're going um, by the width to the right and Y is going to stick the same. So we're only moving from the X position, wherever that is, to the right by the amount which is by the amount defined by the width. And then the same goes if we go down. So we're still over here. So we're still at X plus the width. And then now we went down here. So we're now Y plus the height. If you find it confusing to just draw it from your head, then I would recommend calling your function up here if it doesn't cause you, like if it doesn't cause any problem or potentially cause any problems. Um, and I'm talking about things with for loops mainly because that can cause lots of issues. But for something like this, we can just call it over here. So I'm just gonna call it and give it a position of, let's say, width divided by two and height divided by two. And for width, I'm gonna just give it a width of 100 and height, I'm gonna give it also a width of 100. And for offset, I'm gonna just do zero for now because we're not using it. And here, of course, I'm gonna use uh, P graphics, I forgot about that. And I'm going to have to put it in between uh, begin draw and end draw and since we already have this with the background ready. So I'm just gonna use it over here. And since this is using the P graphic as a variable or as a argument, then it's going to use it over here instead of the G. Oh, and I'm not drawing the image. So let's draw the image of background at zero, zero. And you can see we moved from this part to here and then down. And finally, we're going to need to go to the left side. So now going to the left side is going to be X because we're removing this width and the height is going to be the exact same thing because we haven't moved. And if I run this now, it should be a rectangle. The only reason why I'm saying you don't have to draw this line manually is because by default, if you put close over here in end shape, then you, you're going to have a close shape. So it's going to draw a straight line from the last point that you drew to the first point that you drew. And since we have a rectangle or a square, it doesn't really matter. So now if I make this 200, it's going to be a rectangle. Now it doesn't make any sense that we created a whole function to repeat whatever square and rectangle do. So we're gonna have to implement the offset. So I just do a random point from so X plus a random point from minus offset to offset. So I want it to go either right or left. And then the same for each of these variables. Because if I 
have a, a variable over here for offset and just give it a random value, then it's going to be the same for everyone or for every point. And that will move this whole rectangle to wherever position we moved it to, because now we have the same random value for everything. Um, so it's basically just shifting the whole rectangle. So I have to add it to each one. If there's a better way, please let me know in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna have to copy this with a plus because this is tedious. Okay, just let me check. Everything is working fine. And now if I add an offset of 10, let's say, then it's going to have an offset, which looks far more interesting than the normal rectangle. And then if we add some color to it, no stroke, and as you can see, we have different colored rectangles, but now it's just one rectangle and we'll do an array of those. Okay, to do an array, let's inside of this P graphics begin draw function, just write a for loop, just a normal for loop. And let's do count and I'll define count up here. We'll do 10 for now. And to auto format, just um, if you didn't know, you just hit Command T on a Mac or Control T, I believe, on a Windows computer. And now we can do random for position. So random width, random height. And I'm gonna leave these the same. And that will give me a random value for each loop. So it's going to be a random offset for each of the rectangles. Now, if I run this, I get a multi I get multiples of rectangles, but I'll have to have this inside in order to get a random fill or a different fill for each rectangle. And now we're getting random rectangles with a random fill. I mean, don't worry about them being black and white. I just start with black and white and then I play with colors later. And to see the mask working on this background layer with whatever shapes we have right now, we can just do like we did before, background dot mask with the mask. Oh, we don't have a mask yet, okay. Um, how about we create the mask first and then we go to 3D noise. I think that's better, just so we can comment out the mask and then we can uncomment it whenever we need to see uh, how things are working. So the way I created the mask is just by um, drawing a, a bunch of circles randomly. So I used a for loop just like I did with this odd rectangle. So I'm gonna just copy whatever I did over here for the loop. And then also here I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do mask dot begin draw and of course end draw. Also I'm going to do no stroke for this or, or let's make the stroke white just because I want to also use the stroke to show something because if I don't change it then it's going to be by default black and that will ruin the mask. Um, actually, let me just uncomment it. Maybe we can see it and then change it um, because I think the best way to understand something is by seeing it. And then in here, I'm going to draw a bunch of circles. So it's the same amount over here. You don't have to make it the same amount, of course. Also, if you notice in my design, uh, the reason why I'm using the same count uh, or why I'm just automatically doing the same thing I did before is because I'm drawing each rectangle at the position of each of the circles. So it doesn't show right here because the circles are drawn from the center, but then the rectangles are drawn from the corner. And so if you notice this part, for instance, this green rectangle is actually being drawn on the same position as this circle and this rectangle is being drawn on top of this circle and so on and so forth. So this 
rectangle is actually showing me right now that there is a circle in here, but we don't see it just because it's already masked with all of these. It's kind of bundled all together to create one mask. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted each of the rectangles to show in, um, in the shape that I have. Because if I don't do this and I just draw the rectangles randomly, then they're not going to show because some of them are going to be over here, for instance. So it's not, so it's just being drawn and making, um, more stuff that are not visible that I don't really need. And that's the only reason why I'm using the same count, but feel free to just use whatever random values you have. If you want your mask to be much, um, a, a much smaller quantity, then feel free to do so. But I'm going to keep it the same because I'm also going to later save the positions of each of the um, rectangles so I can use them with the circles as well. But right now, I'm just going to use the same values over here. So it's going to give me a random width or a random position or X value from zero to width and a random Y value from zero to height. And I'm going to make them random widths and height or a random size basically. And uh, the circle is drawn using the diameter of it, not the radius, just in case you didn't know or you didn't check the documentation. Just in case you didn't know. So random and let's make it something from, let's make it something from 10 to 100. We'll see what that looks like. Now that we have a mask and we're using it over here, and then we're drawing the image after the mask is applied to it. You can see the rectangles are actually hidden. And if you notice over here, you can see that these are not merged or they don't look merged. And that's where this comes in because the stroke right now by default is black and that hides things. So it is actually hiding whatever is behind it. Uh, we're gonna have to increase the number of objects so we can see it better. So now, yeah, you can see that, oh, I actually added the stroke because I, cool. So if I hide this and then we see the black stroke, you can see that it's actually hiding this part of the rectangles or the background because black hides things and white shows things. Uh, that's how masks work. So if I change the stroke to white, or I believe if you just use no stroke, then this happens. It's just going to merge the shapes together because now everything is just white and that shows everything. And the background is black and that's why it's hiding everything around it. And now you can see that some circles don't have a rectangle like this one. Um, like this one as well. Maybe it has a white one, I don't know, but we don't really see anything. And this is one of the reasons why I'm using the same count because I initialized a bunch of positions into an array to use them with the rectangle and with the circles for their position. So I initialized uh, or I created random positions, save them into an array and then use them in here. So we're going to do that just so we don't have empty circles, unless that's what you desire. Instead of creating two arrays or a two dimensional array with floats, I'm going to use P vectors and use it as an array for positions. So for X and Y, and then I'm going to make it the same size as the count or make the array the same size as the count. So we're gonna need this to be on top here so you can see it. And then I'm going to use a for loop that is less than the count. And I'm going to say for position at index i, I want a new p vector with a random position for x value from zero to width and a random value for y 
from zero to height. And since we're doing from zero, we don't need the first parameter over here because minimum is always zero for random or for the random function. And now we have our positions over here. So what we're going to do is simply use it over here. Also, I wouldn't recommend copying and pasting like that because it just causes lots of issues in your code that you cannot notice. So it's much, it's much better to write it unless you really focus to while you're copying and pasting. I've created lots of errors just because of copying and pasting things, not remembering where I copied and pasted. Now, if I run this, we should have a rectangle or a corner of the rectangle for each of the circles. Unless there are overlapping rectangles and they're not showing some of the circles. Cool. Uh, if you really want to see it, you can just do uh, the opacity. You can reduce the opacity to 100. The maximum is 255 for RGBs. And you can see them right now. And this is a point where sometimes I start to get bored from seeing black and white and I would just want to add colors to my designs. I grabbed some of the colors I used or the color palette I used for my designs or for a design that I showed. And now instead of just using a random fill over here, so if I just do calls and then for the position, I can do a random value from zero to calls.length or the length of the array. And that will require to be cast into an integer because indices cannot be floats. So this keyword is going to round this down and give us the positions for these colors. And if I run this, I should see colors. And I also will change the color of the background to something lighter. And then I'm also going to change this background color to something different as well. Let's also make the circles a little bit bigger. So something from 50 to 200. And let's make the screen a little bit bigger too. So 1080 by 1080. Okay. And let's change the count to 100. Okay, that's nice. And let's increase the opacity a little bit just to make it a little bit more opaque. Also, instead of opacity, you can play with the blend mode. So if you do, if you're used to using blend mode in Illustrator or any other software, and you can just do, there are multiple ones. So if you use multiply, then you get multiplied colors. You can also do screen. And there are a bunch of other ones that you can use. And if you don't want the blend mode to affect your like some some of your other parts of the layer, then you can redefine it before that area. So if you're drawing maybe circles here inside of this background, let's say I want to grab the same thing. And I don't want this blend mode because if I run it like this, it's going to affect the circles as well. And if I don't want it to affect the circles, then I can just, um, just like we do with fill and stroke, you can just redefine it and just do um, blend, I think is the default. Yeah. So you now you get screen or rectangles with a screen blend mode and you get the normal blend mode or the default blend mode for the circles. Now it's time to create the agent, which is going to walk across the screen, creating those wavy lines. For that, I'm going to create a new file or tab because I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call it agent. And the constructor is not going to take anything at the moment, but we'll have to define an X and Y position. And here we're going to start each agent from a random width or from a random point from zero to width and Y is going to be the same, but height wise. The reason why I define width and height all the time, even though my screen is a square right now is because um, 
for this video, for instance, in order to create the thumbnail, I'm going to have to change it. And it's going to be and it's going to be a little bit annoying to go back and change everything to have both width and height. So it's much easier for me to just start it with with the idea that it, this screen might be a rectangle one day. So yeah, I'm aware that I'm using height even though width and height are the same. And for each point that is going to move or for each agent that is going to move on the screen, it's going to require a size because the stroke weight of one is not that prominent and you're going to need to increase it just a little bit unless what you're looking for is a very thin line. Also, one sometimes is a little bit annoying for some reason. I like to either reduce it to a lower value or more than that. So usually my go-to is three. So I'm going to just define it over here. And because it's going to be moving, I'm also going to define a speed. You don't have to define all of these parameters all at, uh, all at once. You can just, as you're doing or as you're creating your design, realize what variables you're going to need to be consistent in several places and then just add them here. But since I already know what we're going to need, there's no point in just showing you how I sometimes create it. And then I'm going to need a display method or show method. And before I do anything, I actually want to see the 3D noise on its own. So I'm going to remove the mask and or just remove the mask actually. I'm gonna just leave the image on its own. And let's create the point that we're going to use. So I'm gonna just use point X and Y. I'm gonna give it a stroke weight of size and then I'm going to create the update function. For now let's do random walk and then we're going to do 3D noise just so we can see that things are actually working with the class. And then I'm defining or I'll be defining agent over here. Uh, let's create one first and then we'll deal with uh, an array. Agent is going to just be a new agent so we're initializing an object from that class. And then in here, I'm going to call agent.display and agent.update. And you can see it moving. Actually, we're not using random. So for a random walk, you're going to use um, something between negative speed and speed for uh, a random value from negative speed to speed. The reason why I use negative speed to speed and not from zero to speed is because I want it to move left and right and not just in one direction. And then we're going to do the same for Y. And if I increase the speed, let's say 13. So this is a problem. The reason why I wanted to show you the random walk is because I wanted to show you how you can avoid having disconnected points with higher speeds. So the way you can fix this is by drawing a line. And the line needs two points. So an X and Y position for the start for the start value and then an X and Y position for the end value for the line. So these two points are going to be connected to create the line. So I'm going to just do pre.x and pre.y and we'll create that. So this is our previous Point, and this is our current point. And we are going to create that over here. I'm going to just do a P vector because we're not using this too much. Uh, and it's much easier for me to use a P vector because it's shorter for me. And I'm going to call it pre. And then we're going to initialize it here. So it's going to be a new P vector. And it's going to start at X and Y. And every time we update, we're going to say pre.x equals x and pre dot y is going to equal x or you can even just say and this is why I like p vectors is just say set pre to x and y that way you don't need two lines of code actually I'm going to set it here in the display function and now it's connected lines when before it was just disconnected points 
uh, which doesn't really look great, especially with noise. As it speeds up, if you have random speed throughout, then as it speeds up, it's just going to be um, ugly looking. But this way we have connected lines and it looks much nicer. Even for random walk, it looks nicer. But we need to change this into 3D noise because we like flowy movement, or at least I like it. So for that, we're going to update x and y by using trigonometry functions, cosine and sine, because that way we can use an angle which is going to be increased or changed using noise. And that is going to create that flowy movement because the rotation of the point is going to be derived by the noise function. So inside of the update function, instead of using random, we're going to use cosine, the angle, multiplied by the speed. And then here, it's going to be sine the angle multiplied by speed. And we're going to define angle right now. So if angle was just increasing by a specific point, so if I have angle plus equal, let's say 0 0.1 or 0, 1, then this is going to create a circle. So if I do it over here, and then I have angle increasing, this should create a circle. And because the speed is too high, it's actually creating a circle and it's gonna go back from here. But if I reduce the speed to three, then you're going to see a smaller circle that you can see fully on the screen basically. And it's going to go round and round forever, drawing the same circle over and over again. But what we wanna do is not create perfect circles. So angle is going to be derived by the noise function, like I said. And we don't need to initialize it over here. You can just do this. So angle is going to equal noise. And noise takes up to three parameters or arguments, I believe. But you can start with just x. So if I do this, it's not going to do much because, and it's going to be very similar to noise because it just gives values that are one or less. It doesn't give me higher values. And if I increase it by speed, it's still going to give me something very noisy uh, or very random. So I'll just scale it up by a value that I'm going to call noise, um, actually strength, because it's just the strength of the wave of the noise. And then up here, I'm going to create those or define those variables. Um, I'm going to use two, so I'm just going to define them right now. And bear with me, I'll explain all of that. So one is going to be called noise scale, and I'm going to make it a thousand. And then another variable is going to be noise strength, and I'm going to make that 60. Those values are arbitrary. I'm just using what I start with normally because I like the smoothness of these values. And then over here, I'm going to use noise strength. So this is one um, dimensional noise. And the reason why this is looking very random and not the way we want it to be smooth is because x is x is showing or this noise function is showing a huge range of dips and uh, high points in the wave so it's moving through lots of valleys and hills inside of that wave i don't know what you would call these um like bumps but i would just call them um, hills and valleys because it's much easier for me to understand them and in order to scale into part of that just to get a smoother movement so imagine a wave happening over here kind of very noisy and then we want to scale into just part of it so that will be just much smoother because I want to scale that up to fit the width of the screen. Uh, just imagine looking at maybe a desert from afar and seeing those, um, what are they called, dunes? Seeing those from afar is going to be a lot noisier and you'll see more um, hills or more height. And then if you zoom into one, you're gonna see just one big smooth area. So that's basically what we're doing over here. We're just 
dividing it by noise scale and that will zoom into a chunk of the wave. Hopefully I'm explaining that well. And then if I run this, it should be much smoother. Uh, but now this is just one dimensional noise. So if we want it to be two dimensional noise, we can just add Y um, and also divide it by noise scale. And this way you'll get um, more rotation. And then what we want is a 3D noise and that's even more fun. So the way you would do this is just by adding a value called Z and we are going to define it up here. And for Z, all you're going to need to do is initialize it with a random value. Uh, let's say, also these numbers are arbitrary because I don't know what is good or what I started with. I just pick and choose random numbers and see what works for me or what looks good and stick with them. And then I'm going to increase that over here because it has to be a moving value like X and Y. I'm also going to choose a number that I used before that looks good, but feel free to change it up and see how that helps. Let's run this and see what happens. You can see that there is a bit more of a turn there um, than the two dimensional noise. And also it goes back, usually two dimensional noise, if it goes outward, it's just gonna continue in that movement, especially if it's a smooth movement. But adding that third dimensional noise it adds more rotation and it gets your line back into the screen. You can also, um, and we're going to do, you can also add bounds, so checking if it crossed the screen and then bringing it back from the other side or doing something with the angle so it goes back this way. It's up to you how you want to do it. I just didn't do that because it looked fine for me, for now at least. But now we only have one agent and that doesn't look that interesting. So let's create an array of agents. And also I always start with one and then continue with more because it's much faster that way to check. And I'm going to just initialize the array and let's make it 10 agents. And now this is gonna require a for loop. And usually I'm a bit lazy with writing for loops over and over again. So I usually copy them and just fix the length. So this is going to be the agent's length, of course, or the agent's array length. And finally, down here, uh, we don't need to change anything because I'm going to use the for in loop. So for agent of type agent in the array agent. And now it's going to use this to call the display and update function for all of the agents. And now we have points running or starting from random points and then running across the screen using the three dimensional noise. And as you can see, because we have more points now, you can see the rotation better. And now if I just open the mask or uncommon the mask, and the reason why this is not happening is because I forgot that we haven't drawn it inside of, or drawn the line inside of our background layer. So now it's drawing on top of everything. And it's very simple to do that. You can just use P graphics or pass in P graphics over here. And I'm going to call it G right now. And let's uh, give it a color instead of black. I actually gave it a very dark color so it looks like black, but it's um, very dark navy. Now we're gonna have to use P graphics over here. So I'm going to pass in the background layer. Um, also, we're going to, we're going to have to call uh, begin draw for the background layer over here and end draw because this is only drawing into the P graphics, but it's uh, not drawing it over here. And it's not wise to put it inside of 
here because this will be inside of a for loop and there's no need to open the layer over and over again and closing it. So we can just open it once and then draw everything inside of it for each frame and then end that draw because it's already inside of a loop. Um, yeah, now if I run it, it should be inside of the mask. Well, it's not. Oh, I'm drawing the mask before I even, or I'm drawing this after I'm creating, I'm drawing the image. So it's not seeing this part. Yeah, so now it should work. That's basically it. It's very simple to create a mask and create whatever drawings uh, below it. And I wanted to show you 3D noise inside of it because I wanted to show you that you can use animation inside of P graphics, especially a P graphics mask, because I know sometimes P graphics masks don't work with each other. They have to have an image. Also for masks, you can create your own images outside of uh, processing and then bring them in to mask. So if you have maybe a logo that you've created, just import it in as an image, uh, as a black and white image to create the mask. So whatever design you want inside of your logo, you're gonna have to make your logo white and then the rest of your image black. So that way only the white areas are going to reveal the design. Uh, so it doesn't have to be P graphics. You can also import images. I hope you had fun creating this with me. And if you have any suggestions for other things that we can create together on this channel, or if you have any suggestions on how we can make this better, then please write them in the comments below and subscribe if you want more tutorials like this, or if you want to see more process videos, I also do 3D design here and there. I'm just starting out. That's why I don't really create tutorials and I just create process videos, but I've acquired some knowledge here and there and some tips and tricks for Blender basically, because I don't use Cinema 4D and I might be able to help in that area a little bit um, from my experience. So yeah, if you're if you're interested in anything on my Instagram, uh, then please let me know and I'll be delighted to create a tutorial for that. I hope you have a great day or night and talk to you next time. On the